All right, so let's go over some of the uh, changes that we've had here. Um, these look very similar, but that's just because of the filament that was used. The internal setups of them are actually fairly different. About the only thing they share in common right now is that they're both using the uh, K26 springs. I've broken so many of these. This is the last time I'm going to print one of these in gray because that's the last of this uh, gray filament that I have after several spools. This is actually made out of uh, TPU. So you can actually squeeze that and pull it right off if you want to by twisting it. But, um, hey, this one's not going to crack. And to be honest, the uh, TPU feel is actually kind of, uh, kind of feels, has a soft touch to it, which is really nice. The other difference here is instead of the stock uh, nylon uh, thread coverings, we have brass rods. And what the brass rods do is um, this is now actually structural support. So you can bow these and the uh, nylon here, it, it really serves no purpose other than to protect the uh, action from the threads. Um, in this case, it actually provides uh, additional structural support. Just like the full rail system, it technically is also providing additional structural support so that uh, you're not relying on a plastic piece of tubing, PET G tubing. Um, spacing the uh, front and the receiver. So this is actually quite a bit more stable and you'll notice when you pick it up that there's uh, less flex and less twist to it. So brass, um, all thread coverings are preferable to the, uh, to the nylon, although the nylon's cheaper. Um, I think I've already gone over in depth the uh, DVZ, the uh, Rapture, receiver and um, minor issues aside uh, I would prefer this over the stock caliber piece just because it makes uh, maintenance and spring swapping much faster popping out two pins here and here to change out the cup to service the uh, plunger uh, seals to change out the spring um, all that comes out far more easier than touching the butt plate so once you have this in place, you pretty much no longer need to uh, take that apart, unless if something is broken or needs to be replaced. So both of them are using the half inch brass breech. This one is um, 17 30 seconds brass barrel, 12 inches, and it still performs the same as the 18 inch aluminum barrel from Captain Slug. Uh, the 1730 seconds brass is a sleeve and it's actually inside half inch copper tubing or piping and the copper piping has 16 millimeter outer diameter so it fits in perfectly um, you do need to flare out the brass tubing in order to get it to stay inside the half inch uh, copper piping but once you have all that in place then uh, you've got yourself a nice uh, composite barrel that again outperforms the uh, stock aluminum barrel, even though you're comparing a 12-inch barrel to an 18-inch barrel. 12-inch barrel still outperforms the 18-inch barrel from uh, Captain Slug. So we take a look at the ramrod bolt. The tip is made out of TPU, and you get a pretty much perfect seal in there. In fact, almost too perfect. Um, this thing needs to be uh, polished and uh, you probably want to put a little bit of antioxidant on there to keep it from tarnishing because sometimes it can actually stick inside the 1732nd barrel, but the seal in there is quite good. If you take a look at the RAM base, this is also made out of TPU and it's using the heavier O-ring. Uh, seal on that's pretty good. It's been extended out a little bit so that the uh, bolt doesn't droop. I've noticed it's a little bit of sag. The uh, more use that they get, uh, the threads tend to loosen up a little bit if you're using plastic. Even if you had a nice machined uh, aluminum base over time, the, uh, the screw holes for the aluminum base will also start to loosen. The way that you can prevent that, snag, that, that little bit of a sag is by extending the base out and removing the chamfer because all that does is it removes wall support. So the more support that you have here, 
the uh, less chance that you're going to have of the uh, bolt sagging over time. And also because it's made out of TPU, you know, it replaces the need for a uh, shock buffer. So this one here is still using the uh, aluminum barrel, even though it's totally concealed. We're also using a half inch brass bolt, but the dimensions on the TPU tip are uh, about 13 millimeter because if you just go with the half inch brass inside the 13 millimeter inner diameter Captain Slug uh, barrel, then you're gonna get a leaky seal. So I might remix this again so that I can incorporate inside the TPU tip a slot for um, the, the little O-rings, the half inch O-rings, but um, I'm more or less okay with the 220, 230 FPS that I get out of this. And I'm getting about, using the same exact magazine, same exact type of darts, etc., about 10 or so FPS more out of the uh, shortened caliber. So if you can get better performance out of a shorter barrel, honestly, there is no reason to mess around anymore with uh, the 18-inch aluminum barrels. Um, I kind of wish that you could get 17 30 seconds brass in lengths larger than 12 inches because there is some dead space here since the barrel only extends about to there and there's a little bit of dead space in the copper tubing so if i had brass tubing that went all the way through the copper piping then um i see no reason why i wouldn't be able to get an additional maybe 20 fps more although you may be approaching the limitations of the uh, kt6 spring in terms of the amount of air that it can push out of the plunger system but, um, you know, since we've seen Caliburns that shoot over 300 FPS, um, usually using K14 spring setups, there's no reason to believe that uh, this as a plunger system is the limitation. It's more the seals and the power provided by the spring itself. So that's about it for uh, this round of uh, changes and updates. And this is what I'm going to be running at uh, Ragnar Oktoberfest. Um, a and B, one will be the back for the other.